you are now live. Thank you. Um, good morning, um, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing this live stream of this meeting, and welcome to the, this meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee. My name is Councillor Claire Delderfield, and I'm the Vice Chair of this um, Grants Advisory Committee. And for um, information of members of the public, the role of this committee is to consider and make recommendations to the Lead Cabinet Officer for Finance, Councillor John Williams, on applications made under the Council's grant schemes. Councillor Williams then makes his decision, taking into account our recommendations. This is one of the um, early um, virtual meetings that we've had. We've had a, a number now, but I would like everyone to be patient with us um, if we have any technical issues. And um, if you're watching um, virtually online, please do be patient with us if we have um, connection problems. Uh, we are getting used to this way of working. Um, members, can you please remember to uh, mute your microphones unless you're called on to speak um, and you'll need to unmute in order to speak and I'll, I'll give you time to do that. So let's move on to the agenda. Um, so the first item is apologies for absence. Uh, thank you, Chair. So we've received uh, two apologies for absence this morning uh, from Councillor Joris Hales and Councillor Sue Ellington. Uh, for the rest of the members, I will read out your name. Uh, could you please confirm that you're present, remembering to unmute your microphones before you speak? Uh, so, uh, Councillor Daunton, please. Um, yes, I'm here. Uh, Councillor MacDonald? Uh, yes, good morning. And uh, Councillor Delafield, clearly uh, you're obviously present. And uh, Councillor John Williams, Lead Cabinet Member for Finance, can you also confirm that you are in attendance today, please? Yes, good morning. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I can confirm then that this meeting is, is quorate. Um, may I ask the officers in the meeting to unmute themselves and introduce themselves, please? Um, I believe we've got a number of um, officers present and I can see Siobhan and please do introduce yourselves. So um, actually, we'll start with you, Aaron, since you've spoken yeah. already. Uh, my name is Aaron Clark. I'm the Democratic Services Officer for this meeting and I will be clerking the proceedings. Thank you. Jonathan. So I just unmuted myself. Is that working? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I uh, just unmuted myself, but I'm Jonathan Moulton, uh, a Cabinet Support Officer, and I am live streaming this meeting. Thank you. Uh, Siobhan. Good morning, I'm Siobhan Mellon and I'm the Development Officer for Privacy and Environment. Thank you. Um, Emma? Hi, I'm Emma Dyer. I'm Project Officer for Climate Environment. Um, Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca Weymouth Woods. Um, I'm technically Waste Policy Manager, but I also look after the, the uh, two ladies, the Climate and Environment team. Thank you very much indeed. Um, have I missed anybody or have we covered everybody that's on the call? I think we're we're covered. Thank you. Um, do any members have any interest to declare in relation to any of item business on the agenda today? Um, and if an, in, um, if an interest subsequently becomes apparent later, then of course, please raise that. But any any interest to declare? No. I have everybody shaking their heads, so we'll proceed then. Um, so that takes us on to item three, which is minutes of the previous meeting. Um, I'm going to actually take these minutes kind of on block and check whether you're comfortable with us signing them up on block first. So please could I check with members of the committee um, if they are happy with them to be signed off as they are. I'm going to start with Councillor Daunton. Uh, yes, I'm happy with that. And I will go to Councillor. So, sorry, Councillor MacDonald. Uh, yes, yes, I'm happy with those, Chair. And as am I. Um, it, um, I'm happy with those too. Um, so can we take that those that I can sign those up as a true record and, and arrange for that to happen? However, these things happen electronically now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's item three. Takes us to item four, which is to the, the main point of this agenda, which is the zero carbon grants um, new criteria and guidance, um, which is again, the notes are at um, item four and there's a number, a couple of the appendices which go with that. So um, Siobhan, are you going to introduce this item? Uh, yes, 
So, um, as you know, this item proposes changes, we could say refinements to the zero carbon species plant scheme, as we're always intended following the review of the scheme, now, uh, the scheme's first year. So in a moment, I will hand you over to Emma, who will run through the detail of the scheme as now proposed. But just to say that as this scheme involves grants of over £5,000, Cabinet are the decision makers for scheme criteria, and therefore the committee are asked to recommend approval of the new scheme to Cabinet, with or without any changes you feel necessary. Cabinet will look at this on Monday, and so your recommendations will be published this afternoon as an addendum to the report, which has already gone to Cabinet. You're also asked to recommend that authority to make minor changes to the scheme documents for the purpose of clarity is delegated to the head of shared waste and environment. And now I'll pass you over to Emma if um, you're happy with that for her to run through the details of the proposal. Thank you. Can I just pause for a moment because I've noticed that Councillor Bhattacharya has, has joined us. Uh, morning. <laughs> um, Councillor Bhattacharya, we've we just moved on to item four, um, which is the main item for today. But just before we do that, can you confirm um, whether you have any interest in any of the uh, in any of the items on the agenda today? <coughs> there was <coughs> there was one um, application supply uh, submitted from my <coughs> charity, which I'm associated with the uh, CamCare UK. So, so I will keep no myself. On, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I guess that has been noted. Um, yes, please do carry on then with the <laughs> with with the item. Thank you, Emma. OK, thank you. Um, so last year um, we allowed for a broad range of projects to be considered. Um, we received 42 applications, which was fantastic. Um, we managed to fund 19 projects. But this year um, we want to make some modifications. Why change the grant? We wanted to build on the success of the first round of the scheme. We wanted to share our thinking and listen to the members' comments and suggestions. We wanted to take into consideration feedbacks from last year's applicants. We wanted to make it um, a little bit easier of the application process. Um, we wanted to make it easier to compare and score projects um, and allow us to procure services and possible bulk discounts. So this year we're proposing three streams, cycling, community buildings and tree planting and other nature based solutions. These three streams were the most popular with our applicants last year. Our members workshop also allowed us to take into consideration suggestions, concerns and improvements from, for round two. So first of all, we've got cycling. Um, the first thing we are proposing is a cycling stream. Last year, it was the most popular option with eight successfully funded projects covering a broad range from cycle racks, cycle repair cafes to e-bike share schemes and an app to make it easier to apply for infrastructure changes. We appreciate the needs of villages um, can vary due to different demographics. So this year we're proposing to make it easier to compare bike projects by allowing us to ask specific questions with the objectives of one, reducing the miles travelled in private vehicles, two, increasing the take up of cycling by people who would not otherwise cycle. And within our cycling stream, we are proposing three categories. The first one is improvement to cycling infrastructure. So in this category, um, applicants could bring forward a cycle lane, a cycle way, install a cycle stand um, or make some other improvement which promotes cycling. Um, we recognise it's important that we know who owns the land and what value it brings to the community. Um, and also that a small change could make a big difference, which is what we're looking for in terms of value for money. Second category um, is the electric bike or electric cargo trike um, category. It was evident last year that electric bikes and trikes were considered valuable assets to the villages in our district. We thought that this year we could offer applicants the chance to own their own e-bike for use in a local share scheme managed by themselves. By using our procurement power, we can hopefully get better value for money with bulk buys. Applicants will be given the opportunity to tell us how they propose to manage their scheme and how they intend to ensure the bikes, which I know has caused, um, sorry, ensure the bikes, which I know has caused issues in the past. As we funded e-bike share schemes last year, we can draw on their expertise and offer advice if needed. It might be that users would have to pay to help cover these costs. The, um, the third category would be one to kickstart a commercial electric share bike scheme in, um, in the area. 
So by using a commercial operator, applicants can also run an e-bike share scheme without the worry of taking on the booking, the maintenance, replacement of any bikes with punctures or mechanical faults, um, insurance. Um, um, there's a dedicated helpline and battery recharging as well as part of this, um, all provided by the operator. So all that is needed is a suitable, clearly marked out location for the bikes to be stationed. The bonus here is that bike lockers are not needed due to the um, attached locking and tracking devices attached to each bike. We are proposing to fund four bikes per application, and this would give the opportunity for families and friends to cycle together. It also means bikes are more likely to be available to hire. And users, users would need to pay a small rental fee of perhaps £4.50 for 12 hours through a mobile phone app or prepaid smart card. Again, we will procure the services of a commercial operator such as Cambridge Electric Transport and provide a 50% subsidy to a commercial operator for the first year to kickstart the scheme. Typically, four e-bikes would be based in each village, which would cost 2,400 for a year's subsidy. So on to the next stream, which is community buildings. The second stream we are proposing is a community building stream to help with improvements to those community buildings which are available for use. Last year, although very popular with 11 applications, only one community building fund project was funded, which was Ickleton Village Hall, and that was a lighting upgrade. The rest fell down due to not enough in the way of community engagement. This year, we have clearly stated in the objectives that along with a reduction of fossil fuel energy, we would like proposals to include an increased awareness of energy improvements to the public. We believe that taking a whole building approach which takes into account the energy hierarchy is the most efficient approach as it ranks the stages on the way to using less energy in a building. So the energy hierarchy, I don't know if you've seen this, um, basically you'd have to do the energy conservation measures first, um, then the energy efficiency and then go on to renewable energy. We believe leading by example is key and we hope that the projects will receive, um, we receive will raise awareness to the public on how improvements can benefit any, any building. For example, by holding an open event, promotion via social media or newsletters. We are requesting that applicants have a freehold or leasehold interest in place and a lease must have at least 21 years on it. So the first category within buildings is um, energy surveys. Um, we recognise that it's wise to use the services of experts when making energy efficiency measures to make the best savings and reductions in carbon emissions. For this reason, we propose to invite applicants to apply for an energy efficiency survey, um, a bespoke report and advice all procured by us. Reports are typically around 1,250. Second category is energy and conservation or efficiency measures. This is where applicants have already had their energy survey and would like to improve the changes that we have, have been recommended. We are proposing to fund the insulation of walls, ceilings or floors of community buildings, replacement doors or windows and energy efficiency measures such as lighting upgrades. Although applicants with no energy survey can apply, we would prefer to see advice given from a professional. And the third um, category is um, solar PV and or battery storage system for solar PV. Solar PV and battery storage are a popular choice in this stream, with five applications not funded last year due to lack of community engagement, inaccuracies in CO2 savings and lack of detail on or no energy conservation measures already undertaken. If our applicants satisfactorily answer our questions, we would want them to register with Cambridgeshire Solar together by their deadline of the 5th of October. Then, if they are happy with their offer and are successful with our grant, we will then pay Cambridge Solar together the price they are offered to undertake their project. And the prices are typically 20% less than the market rate, which is quite a good deal. Our final stream is um, the popular tree planting and other nature based solutions. Last year, we funded four out of the five applications we received for tree planting. We would like the tree planting to be a theme again this year, as it was a great opportunity to involve communities, no matter how small. We have therefore included an awareness of trees as an objective, along with the reduction of CO2 in the atmosphere. Habitat creation or restoration has been added in too, as we see this as an important added benefit. We propose to keep the stream quite broad as we appreciate demographics and volunteer numbers can vary considerably. We would like funded projects to be sustained in the long term and have included privately owned land so long as um, applicants can show that the trees will be preserved in the future. 
We also recognise that tree planting can sometimes cause more damage than good, so we have included an option to fund a tree consultant and those projects which have already sought advice from a tree consultant will be looked upon favourably. OK, any thank questions? You, thank, you. thank you very much indeed. Um, what I will do first is actually um, just run through what it is that we're looking to um, be asked for our recommendations on today and then we'll go to um, um, councillors for for questions and clarifications. So um, just just to be clear that the recommendation that we've been asked to look at today um, is for us to approve the changes to the zero carbon communities grant scheme as have just been outlined by by Emma there on cycling community buildings and tree planting and also uh, the secondly to um, delegate to the head of shared waste service and environment who I think I saw during the meeting but perhaps he just dipped in and dipped out again. <laughs> um, Hi, um, sorry I'm here. So. Oh, that's OK, good to see you um, and to, to allow uh, minor changes to be made to those scheme documents that are in the appendices. So they're the things that we're considering. But I'll open up to um, questions and comments from the councillors. So um, I will go I will go in order if that's OK. So Councillor uh, Bhattacharya, do you have any um, questions that you would like to ask or clarification on, on this recommendation? I'm OK. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Daunton. Um, yes, please. I have a couple of questions. Thank uh, you. On the, the, one is to do with dates. Um, you mentioned, Emma, um, the solar um, getting advice from, um, is it solar energy? The um, Cambridge Solar Together. Cambridge Solar Together, thank you. Cambridge Solar Together with a deadline of the 5th of October. Yes. Um, but the applications for these new, this new round of grants doesn't close until the 30th of September and people do send things in at the last minute. So will there be enough time between the 1st of October, the 2nd of October, even by the time an application comes in and the deadline of the 5th? Um, Siobhan, I think you know more about the sellers together than me, don't you? <laughs> You need to unmute Siobhan, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what we will be asking, um, uh, what, what we're asking through the uh, application form is for um, organisations with a community building where they're interested in solar PV to put in an application with a quote which is um, derived from, uh, from another company. Now they could get this as an online quote so they don't necessarily have to go to a lot of difficulty with this but then they they apply using that quote and then they um, go through the, the solar together Cambridgeshire process which is very likely to produce a lower quote so we would be asking you to decide the applications on the basis of the original quote but then looking to actually fund them through Cambridge and Solar together at a lower quote, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. And um, um, I've got two other questions, Claire, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, OK, so one is a general question, um, and that is to do um, with the, the support that you will offer to applicants. I mean, we know that there were issues with the bikes um, this year. I won't go over all that. We're very familiar with that with Tevisham. Um, so I just wanted to be sure that um, applicants in parish councils, particularly small parish councils, will you'll be able to provide them with enough support in the application process with dealing with the questions, the anxieties, even feeling that you know they perhaps uh, want to put in an application but don't have enough. Um, time or um, expertise locally, you feel able to deal with all of those questions. That's my first question. Um, and my second one is very specific, and that is to do with schools. Um, I know, and it's very clear here on page 13, that schools can't uh, apply for an energy improvement. Um, but could a school um, apply for an improvement to a garden? A school garden which would then be open. Um, that's a very specific question which you might not want to take now but take offline. Um, but the, the um, you're very uh, definite here um, in the objectives under B on page 13 that schools can't apply because there is quite rightly there is the refit schools programme the Cambridgeshire County Council refit schools programme. Um, 
but the question is about a school's garden. So two questions. Thank you. Who would like to come up on those? So um, the first one was about support. What support can we offer to parishes, when it, especially to electric um, um, electric bikes? Um, that's well, what I'll be dealing with. Any queries? Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so any kind of queries can be directed to me. Um, if I don't know the answer, I can find that answer out for them. We're going to have um, a web page dedicated to this with FAQs. Um, and as they come in, we can add them to the web page. So obviously other parishes, if they want to apply, they can look at the FAQs as well. Um, and as for schools, schools can apply in partnership if they have got some suitable land. That's right, Siobhan, isn't it? You're happy with um, uh, yeah, so I, I think it's a good point that we should um, make it clear on the application um, uh, information and it perhaps isn't clear enough at the moment. Um, the situation so far as schools and the tree planting pr mm. proposals. I think and when so you say schools, I think when you say schools, um, not schools themselves, but say a PTA associated with a school because that's a non-profit organisation. I think that, you know, if you've got some parents that perhaps wanted to raise some money and if the school were in agreement, the PTA could then do the application um, for them. Yeah, I mean, this, this may be something that we do need to take offline unless perhaps um, Councillor Williams has any. Um, um, I know that you've spoken before on this aspect of schools. For the District Council to fund um, improvements to school grounds, is that something that we would want to do or not? So Williams, you need to unmute. Oh. Right, OK. Um, yeah, this is something that's come up in the um, in the community chest fund. Um, how much? Um, what what the criteria is for for schools? I think the criteria is, is, is it open to the public? And if it's not open to the public and it's purely for e educational purposes, then it doesn't qualify. If if it's open to the public, um, I the school allows the if if it's a school garden, for example, if the school allows the school uh, public access to that school garden outside of school hours, then clearly that's something that um, benefits the whole community. But if that school garden is simply there as part of the education of the of the students in that school then that's clearly an edu education matter and should be dealt with through the county council not not through south cams so i think that's where i i i draw the line now is it is it something that's open to the community and the whole community can benefit from and it's got to be meaningful benefit it's not you know well we open it to two twice a year or something like that it's got to be um, accessible to the public. I, I think we can use, for example, the water fountains that we agreed um, last year, um, because they were in the public areas of the village college, which would be which is used by the the community. Um, the sporting facilities are used by the community, um, and not in areas which are just um, that that are for the sole use of the students. That, that wouldn't qualify. So that's that's my definition. I don't know if, if uh, other people have a different view of that, but that's the view I have at the moment. Um, the thing that um, obviously with the tree planting, we've sort of we're proposing that it could be for landowners as well. So obviously that would be on private land. So in some ways that might sort of apply to schools as well. Um, so in that case, if 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 they couldn't, then would we consider private landowners as well? Um, I think when it comes to schools, um, as I say, the, the school is the, 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 the land owner is the county council. And one thing that we do not do is give money to other local authorities. Um, well, I, I don't think we're, I'm not sure actually if we're, we're legally able to do that anyway. So um, when it comes to ownership, if it's if it's land that's owned by the parish council or land that's owned by the county council, then we we don't we that 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 falls outside the criteria. Thank you, thank you. Um, I can see that um, Trevor Nichols wants to come in here. Um, I presume it's on this, but do so go ahead. Yeah. So I think um, we will 
we will just review and make some clarity over exactly where um, on each of those elements what can be funded and can't be. I think it's being very clear that this is community funding um, and that the benefit for communities and what we mean by that. So we can add, we'll add something to the application I think is, is important, but we'll add some really clear examples in the frequently asked questions because I think that's where we'll help. Yeah. So I think we'll just look at those issues because I think there is a there, there's a fine line between what's accessible and what's not. So we'll pick that up um, before it goes live. The other issue about support. So that one of the reasons this time that we really look to make it sort of more streamlined on the, on the applications rather than a real open application process was um, a, to make it easier for, for parishes and community groups to apply, um, because we've sort of done some of the thinking, it's about choosing what you do and then how you move it forward. Um, but also that will free up officer time to actually provide support at application stage and throughout to ensure that these projects get um, moving ahead. And also when you look at how we're looking to procure some of the um, the schemes rather than leaving it up to the parishes to have to do that work once they've got the funding on a number of these we're looking to do the procurement side so that that also ensures that our money is being um, we're getting the most effective use out of our money by and that's why with the solar together and we're asking for quotes we do get two quotes quite easily about that but we're actually only asking um, the parishes or the groups to get one and we'll get the secondary quote and hopefully we'll get the um, increase in um, in savings will come through that side so we can help more groups. So I think we, we tried to take all of those points across, but it is about trying to make it easier um, across the board with groups and are helping and enabling these projects to actually happen um, a lot faster than some of them this year. And I know some of those have been caught up in COVID, but I think a lot of them have been caught up in, um, in just the complications of having to do these where we can do a lot of that for the parishes and move them on. Very much. Um, Siobhan, I see your hands up again. Um, did you want to just come in on that? Hey, just a couple of points actually. One, uh, just on this support for parish councils in making their applications. And we have um, provisionally scheduled a, um, a, a session on the 6th of July where we will um, go through what is involved in the scheme as it now um, as, it, as it's now set up. Um, we've also discussed, Emma and I, um, actually sh scheduling a, a, a session with um, appointment slots, uh, sort of surgery where specific um, uh, proposals can be discussed with us. I mean, we're, we're, we're available at any time, but we thought that if we scheduled that for the end of July, it would really give that message very clearly that we're very happy to, uh, um, to, to support. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor Thompson, sorry, Councillor Thompson, if you um, had answers to the questions that you had. Um, uh, yes, thank you. and uh, Thank you very much. I think that will all help enormously. I would just also add um, to the form, I would just sort of add an injunction or a, um, a suggestion that people read the form first before applying <laughs> because <laughs> an awful lot of mistakes or queries happen because some people simply didn't read the form but that happens it does happen thank you um councillor mcdonald do you have any questions or points uh yes thank you once a once a general question well i suppose two general questions first one is for the projects that didn't succeed last year Presumably they uh, can resubmit um, that project with additional information and it'll be considered against the criteria. That's a, that's my first question. Yes, I see yeah. nodding heads. Yeah, yes. I can see nodding heads. So for the, because we had, four, uh, Emma, I think you said 41 and 19 were approved. So that's right. So they can resubmit. Yeah, I mean, they will get an email as well. And um, if they want to contact me, I can obviously sort of, I mean, I did give them feedback last time as well. So they, they sort of know where they sort of fell down. So hopefully okay. they'll better. And the second one is, is, is a request stroke suggestion with my economic hat on. Could, could we say, please, in the applications that um, those that are sourcing from a South Cambridgeshire supplier, um, you know, uh, we, we can't exclude those outside South Cambridgeshire because you, you may have somebody who's got very good technology from London, Scotland, wherever it may be. But can, can we just say to help the economic recovery that 
where where a project or where there's capital involved or expenditure where it's sourced from a South Cambridgeshire supplier will be, you know, considered favourably kind of thing. So they, so they wouldn't be disqualified if it's outside, but but we might look at it more favourably if it's within South Cambridgeshire. Yeah, I think we, we just need to be very careful about how we that wording um, by some of the work that we're looking to do to procure ourselves rather than handing money over and allowing um, parishes or groups to procure. It gives us greater flexibility um, to procure in, in that route or to add that as a weighting. What we don't really want to do is we're trying to make this streamline as possible. Um, we don't want to add in another criteria to measure against. What we may want to do is just put that in the general wordings that um, as a community led um, uh, funding, it, it would be great to see that the the any money is being spent within the local community. So I think we have to be a little bit um, lighter in that that rather than a criteria, it is a, a suggestion. Um, however, for the funding that we are looking to um, to spend, if we're spending that grant money on Solar Together or other, that does allow us to be a bit more, um, we can put that into the procurements to be a bit more forceful. So I don't think we want to add extra burdens in, but I think we should be saying that um, sticking with our sort of our, our, our mantra of buying local for whatever we spend, um, we can put that in just in the wordings and again in the frequently asked questions, but I would really um, suggest that we don't put that as a criteria in because I think that would leave us both up to challenge and it puts more burden on to the groups. Yeah, that, yeah. I was going. I was going to come. I was going to come. Come to John next. So John, thoughts on that? Well, uh, well. Also, don't forget we have a value for money policy, and and this uh, this you know and and this also applies here. The value for money policy applies to this um, yeah. this fund as it does to all our funds. So you know we will need to take that into account as well. Thank you. I like, I like the idea of, of there being some kind of sort of recommending looking at the local local um, suppliers, but without it being a, a criteria seems seems sensible and then we can rely on the um, um, value for money um, that we have to do. So um, are councillors comfortable with the, that sort of being added? Anything else, Councillor McDonald? Uh, uh, no, that's fine. And I agree with Trevor's recommendation. I, I don't want it to be a criteria. Just maybe some uh, a guidance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Any more comments or questions before we move towards the recommendations? Oh, Siobhan, Yes. There is one aspect that is not clear at the moment in our information for applicants, and I think it would be helpful to have your steer on. And that is that it's not clear whether we invite um, organisations to apply for more than one project. Now, this particularly comes up because some of the possibilities, as we've now mapped them out, are actually relatively low cost. In particular, a community building energy survey is, is, is very low cost. The, um, the, the electric, an electric bike or, um, or the kickstarting of the e-bike scheme is, is, is fairly small amount. Um, it would be very it would be good. It would be good to clarify that in our information for applicants. And it would be good to know how you feel about it, since you will be um, looking at the uh, proposals that come in and making your recommendation. Thank you. Comments from councillors on that? Anybody? I mean, anyone want to speak? I mean, my view would be it would seem logical if you've got an organised local community who wanted to do an energy survey and an e-bike scheme, it would seem unfair to to say that they could only apply for one would be my sort of view. Um, how do other councillors feel about that? I'm, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm torn. It's a, it's a very good question. I, I'm really torn. Um, it might um, it might help the larger and better organised parish councils over the smaller and um, under resourced parish councils. I might be a bit wary of that. Um, on the other hand, um, it might make for a really good set of applications where two matching or two um, partner grants could make a, a real substantial difference. Mm -hmm. I'm really torn. I mean, my view would be that we go back to what the purpose of, of the grants are um, 
and that is obviously pushing towards zero carbon communities and and that that should be the focus when when considering them um councillor williams yeah yes um i assume that if you look back at last year's scheme um we had a um a, we, we had a criteria that um we wanted to ensure that the villages uh it was in even distribution across the um the district I don't know if we managed to achieve that, but I would have thought that if that criteria is, is, is continuing, then if a village put in more than one application, we would make a decision as to whether we should grant more than one application on the basis that whether or not the £100,000, which is you know the, the limit of the scheme, has, has been distributed um, evenly across across the district and if it hasn't then we will take that into account into whether or not we um, award a particular parish council more than one application so I just I think that's probably covered in in that um, criteria that of, of wanting to ensure that this money is is spread across the district and not focused on, on maybe one or two parishes that happen to have the resources to deliver the applications. Is that right, Siobhan? Is that? Um... Um, it, yes, I mean, I think one of the things that, um, uh, one of the dilemmas that we'll face organisations seeking to apply will be whether to put in for a small thing or a large thing. And I suppose I'm thinking that if they were to actually apply for the, for, for what they're interested in. We wouldn't necessarily fund both of them, but it would give you the, it, it would actually give you a bit more flexibility as to as, as as to how you do the funding. No, I'm happy with that. I, I think that would, so, so long as at the end of the day, you know, we see this 100,000 um, invested, you know, I, I, I fully appreciate we can't ensure that it's 100% uh, across the district but that so long as we ensure that um, all parishes have an equal chance of the money and the money is being spent you know as far as we can across in schemes across the district then i don't have a problem with say for example a, a parish or, or or an amenity group asking for uh, money for two two or more projects Thank you. Um, anything further on this that anyone would like to raise? Okay, in which case we'll go to um, to the recommendations, which is at item um, point two of item agenda four, a page seven of the agenda. Um, so, are you quite comfortable, councillors, that we take these two recommendations, point one and two, um, together? Um, please nod. <laughs> Yeah, thumbs up. OK, thank you. In which case um, the proposal is um, the recommendation that we recommend to Cabinet um, to Councillor John Williams, the approval of the changes to the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme as outlined in paragraph 11, which will result in a more focused scheme providing funding to projects under the three themes of cycling, community buildings and tree planting and other nature based solutions and um, delegation to the head of shared waste services environment the authority to make minor changes to the scheme documents in appendices a and b um, as necessary for clarity so that is what i'm um, recommend re recommending so um i will go through the councillors um individually to ask if they're happy to accept that recommendation so councillor Batacharia. i'm happy thank you councillor daunton um yes i'm happy thank you Councillor McDonald. Uh, agree. And I can confirm that I'm in agreement with that as well. Um, and yep. obviously the, the fact that we have asked um, delegation for the um, head of shared waste services to make those minor changes means the things that we've discussed today can be picked up in in there. So Councillor yeah, Williams. The point, point I was going to make, Claire, that um, I don't think this needs to be amended to go to Cabinet 
those changes can be picked up by Trevor. Thank you. As part of that delegation, lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Um, OK, that finishes item four, which was the substantive item on the agenda. Um, so just to item five, which is the date of next meeting. The date of next meeting is Friday, the 31st of July at 10 a.m. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the officers for all their hard work on on the Zero um, Carbon Communities Grant and for all of the members who've taken part in the workshop. Um, and also thanks to all of the um, community organisations who have applied for what I think is a, a fantastic scheme um, for us to move forward with um, zero carbon communities in South Cambridgeshire. So um, thank you very much indeed for everybody this morning and um, I'll see you again on the 31st of July. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.